Okay, I think it's 1.32. I think I will start. Um, so hello everyone again, and welcome to this session. Uh, so this is about telecom cloud. So I have to say that for myself, this is my second OpenStack uh, Summit. So I joined the Paris uh, uh, OpenStack Summit. And my general, let's say, impression with this uh, OpenStack Summit is definitely I felt that seems to be definitely an increasing interest regarding this telco cloud discussion. Uh, so I'm really happy to, to have you here. And so that I'm going to go through a number of, let's say, uh, topics which uh, should be wary of, uh, let's say, of strong interest to the community regarding how do we address uh, telco cloud, uh, let's say, performance issue. And we normally talk a lot about carrier grade uh, performance and telecom grade performance. And people have been asking questions, what is special about telecom workload compared with you know, what we have been doing? Previously, so that's very much I think I would like to focus on today. But I would like to start the session with uh, telling a bit about uh, the company I'm working for. I'm working for Arison, uh, as you most likely know. That Arison is the number one mobile infrastructure and services provider, and also we're number one today for OSS, BSS, and plus we're also doing TV platform as well. Uh, so I'm working in Arizon in so-called group function technology. That's where much is the Arizon CTO office in, uh, in headquarter, headquarter in uh, Shista, Stockholm. Uh, so my responsibility is very much focused on, let's say, we have a group uh, working with, uh, we call it industry area data comp. So we're much responsible for the overall Arizon technology strategy for SDN, for NFE, for cloud. Uh, so my own focus is very much on the cloud strategy. So we are working very much, let's say, with uh, our customers, with our partners, to drive NFE and the cloud uh, and SDN, as we said, uh, in this community. Then, yeah. So as I said, today uh, the focus will be on the tel telecom cloud performance. And I myself, like uh, my name is Shen An Yu. I'm uh, a Swedish Chinese, so I've been working in Arizona for 20 years. Uh, so my niche area has been very much in uh, network or infrastructure planning uh, and performance optimization and performance assurance uh, area previously. So today I think I would like to focus on uh, a number of uh, topics. I would like to start with saying to let's uh, talk a bit about end-to-end -end service performance. Because regardless if you have a virtualized network or you have uh, you know, a native, as we call, non-virtualized uh, you know, carrier network today, from an end-user perspective, their expectation on how to say the user experience is very much the same. So therefore, we think it's very important for us to align, you know, to basically agree on what kind of end-user, let's say, end-to-end -end user experience we should focus on when we do the coding, for example, in, in the OpenStack community. And then after that, I think I would like to continue to talk a bit about the telecom grid challenges uh, which is very much focused on the OpenStack community-related areas. And here we're actually calling for the community to support us to address issues jointly. And then also we're going to share a number of solutions as we see like in terms of uh, the joint effort we're driving, for example, OPNV as one example, uh, with very much the mission to basically achieve the telco, uh, let's say, great uh, performance for the, for the industry then. In case you have any question, please, uh, I guess we have a Q&A session, in the end, and I do have my card here with me. In case you felt like you need to know more details of the things uh, we are actually showing today, so we should uh, keep in touch then, uh, like that, yeah. So if we start with end-to-end uh, -end service performance, as I said, like, um, so when we talk about user experience, end-to-end -end perspective, the, the view is very much saying that it's not only about network infrastructure, because today, like, we want to have a view saying it's very much interconnected. It's not only about telecom network uh, itself. It's very much about uh, telecom network inter interconnected with OTT, with IT uh, infrastructure, and also together with application and uh, devices, in a way. Um, so what do we actually see that today? From telecom service provider perspective, when we talk about uh, the, the telecom service performance, for example, I show some example here, like in North America, we do have two carriers like Verizon and AT&T, right? So for carriers, what do they sell to their end user is very much the quality, the performance of their, let's say, network, their infrastructure. Um, so in terms of the requirement, I think we're all very, let's say, we're all very much the subscriber user of, um, 
of carriers' uh, services. So the general requirement, I think, is very much saying we are expecting the, the telecom service to be available all the time. And I myself joined Arizona 20 years ago. I actually did my thesis work uh, about uh, mobile network availability, actually. At that time, we had a mission to talk about zero downtime. But we also know that that's uh, kind of mission impossible. So instead, the focus has been carry grid uh, performance. So you all know about the 5.9, right? The availability is saying you have to be at least uh, be able to provide the 99.999% uh, or even like 6.9, 7.9, or 9.9. Uh, there are different requirements on different level, right, in terms of uh, availability. And not only about saying the network should be available, it's also in case if you truly have an issue, then you truly need to have the fast forward recovery time. Often we talk about milliseconds. For example, the standard requirement is saying you should be able to cover the fault, the error in the network within five milliseconds. So that from the end user perspective, you should not have any feeling about saying the network is on or, you know, I can't make a phone call or my data service is not available, et cetera, yeah. So this is not only saying from the end user perspective, you're putting a requirement. This is very much from the regulator point of view. Like thanks to the regulator requirement, the carriers have been truly driving their infrastructure planning with this kind of requirement. And then the other things like with, uh, let's say, the data traffic is actually increasing, always connected, you know, talk about mobile network coverage is very much important, like how can I get the best access? So I'm going to show you in a minute to talk about even Facebook today is very uh, concerned about, you know, where can the Facebook user get the best access to the Facebook uh, application, for example. And then talk about the speed. I guess you all were, were familiar regarding the speed uh, comparison among uh, carriers, for example, like the typical speed test. I guess many countries are driving this speed test competition among carriers. Uh, and that actually uh, is another way to drive the, the performance requirement. And then that also leads to the infrastructure requirement to the carrier then. So if we talk about in the near future, when they virtualize their network function, when they introduce the cloud capability, but those requirements will still remain uh, to the carriers. So how can we help the carriers to achieve those requirements is definitely the, the biggest, let's say, challenge uh, for the industry then. So if you look at uh, the story I want to share with you today is also why I want to talk about interconnected infrastructure is very much, I, I don't really know if you noticed that, um, uh, for example, here is a story talk about like for Facebook, they are actually very much mobile uh, oriented like, because Arizona is saying we're actually driving the network transformation, we're driving the society transformations through mobility because the mobility seems to be the central part of the things we're doing now. And if you look at the statistics showing like by end of last year, so majority, let's say 526 million of the monthly active user for Facebook is actually through the mobile, uh, you know, either through mobile application, mobile devices for sure. So here we're actually not talking about WhatsApp, by the way. And WhatsApp actually has a major uh, user base in uh, certain countries in particular. So in sense, if you relate to also to the revenue uh, Facebook is generating through their advertisement, you all know like 92% of Facebook revenue is actually from through advertisement. And then if you look at the, the recent figure saying more than, let's say, almost 70% of Facebook revenue actually are through, again, mobile infrastructure. So therefore we're saying now like from under user perspective, the infrastructure is not only about, let's say, Facebook infrastructure, like Facebook, you know, their data center capability, is very much about interconnect with carriers, mobile infrastructure jointly. So with this uh, reason, I think Arizona has been working with Facebook for some time now. So one example to show, like, we have joined um, a project to help Facebook to basically understand, you know, in terms of end user uh, experience, so their end user, how do they exper experience, like for example, when you try to uh, access Facebook application, when you're actually trying to do the certain things, what's the experience there? And then from the infrastructure perspective, the project is also trying to identify what actually is the bottleneck. From the infrastructure perspective, so both, uh, here I'm actually talking about both mobile infrastructure and also the Facebook side of the infrastructure. Then. So it's truly end-to-end, -end, like to identify the limitation and truly define that how can we improve that. 
So this is, we run as a typical, let's say, Arizona services. We run like, for example, application optimization services. So the outcome of the projects, like basically conclude saying we could improve uh, Facebook so-called app coverage. By the way, I should explain a bit here. Uh, app coverage basically is application coverage or application experience. This is a concept Arizona brought up a few years ago. The thinking is very much saying when we talk about user experience, it's not about the average you know, in the network, average in the infrastructure anymore. We want to focus on each individual user at any, any, any time at a certain location. So the so-called app experience is very much like an indicator to show that from the end-to-end -end perspective, what you experience uh, for a certain application, for example, if you use Facebook at a certain time at a certain location. You know, like, do you have the best access? That means that that's app coverage, as we talk about. So here, this project has achieved that basically help Facebook to improve the app coverage by 40%. Uh, the 40% improvement means like you as a user, basically at that location, you know, at that uh, time, you will have 40% better chance to be able to use your Facebook application as you wish to do. So this is a rather big improvement. Then the other thing is related to, to time to content. This is very much related to, you know, when you try to access certain contents in Facebook, it depends on the server quality. You can't have, you know, if you're lucky, it's a bad server. Or if you're lucky, it's a good server. If you're not lucky, it's a bad server. So the time, from the time you request for certain content until you get it, uh, can vary a lot. So we could uh, shorten, basically, the time for con time to content by 70%. And then in the end, upload time. When you try to request, for example, I want to upload a picture, how, how long does it take? So this is also very much an uh, end-user perception of the quality of the infrastructure, the quality of the service then. So here we can improve by 50%. So this is just one example to show that uh, from an end-user perspective, uh, as we talk about the quality for a telecom, let's say, cloud, uh, you know, in the near future, it's not only about, again, as we said, the enterprise side of the cloud infrastructure, but it's very much uh, interconnect with, let's say, the carrier side, the mobile infrastructure, together with, let's say, the cloud infrastructure as well, yeah. Um, so in, uh, in summary, I think what I talk about just now is just to give you a big picture what we mean by end-to-end -end service performance. Uh, and end-to-end, -end, let's say, again, the user experience then. So with those kind of uh, requirements, we definitely felt like we understand the requirement, as I said, on the infrastructure. For example, like if we talk about the telecom grid challenges related to virtualization to cloud infrastructure. So we want to share with you, like uh, we have been working with the requirement uh, setting, for example, for OpenStack for NFE as one example. So this is uh, one way to explain to the community, like what other things uh, OpenStack community need to achieve in order to help the users or you basically the companies who are wishing to use OpenStack uh, products so that they can truly provide a telecom grade service to their end user. So if we start with like talk about the high availability and resilience, and here is very much the, the classic thing, right? When we design, let's say, certain part of the of of the of the block of you, let's say again, you you um, your code, we need to think about the overall big picture, like how can I provide for example, the instance availability, and then how can I make sure that I truly have a proper control on the, for example, like uh, the scalability part of the issues, yeah. And then related to storage, for example, we need to make sure the storage redundancy issue are, are considered, and typically requirements saying it should not be uh, any single point failure um, in any of the storage subsystem, and assuming if you do have an issue, and then you should not really result any downtime to the, let's say, the end user application. So this is a, like a straightforward requirement uh, to, 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 the, to the system design. Yeah? And then related to networking, some examples like here we have a requirement on, again on the redundant, redundancy side and also related to, to latency, for example. And then also I think like we talk about like related to uh, you know, isolation, resource isolation and topology awareness. Uh, this kind of requirement is definitely very critical then to, uh, to the system design. And in the end, we do have also a bunch of requirements related to telecom grade security, related to backup and restore, and also related to very much about software management and upgrade support part. 
Uh, in the end, it's about performance and assurance. Uh, here is very much about fault management, for example, like how can you have truly, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a capability to be able to predetermine certain, let's say, uh, scenarios in case you have truly a, a performance issue, yeah. So I just want to summarize, this is just uh, some examples to show that this is the requirement we have, or the challenge rather. Uh, you know, if we want to provide a telecom great solution to the industry, we need to address those requirements. And the coming slides I want to share, like together working with our partners, our, our customers, uh, we have been achieving, let's say, we have been starting the journey already, like towards the telecom grid solution. So some examples to share with you, like for example, like we have already been doing like WNF provisioning. There is a solution available, and related to high availability, just now I talk about like, you know, here we have actually solution to talk about how do we truly uh, through this uh, fault monitoring, basically you can active monitoring uh, potential issues in, for example, like in. Um, in your host, for example, and that's one way to address uh, basically availability challenges. And another thing is related to assurance side, like we do have a fault and event performance monitoring solution there. And some other examples is related to you know backup restore, as I mentioned now, like we do have solution for aut automatic backup, and internal recovery actions. There's also we do have different solution to improve that. So this is just an example to show that we already have, uh, you know, start a journey, as I said, towards the, the telecom grade of, um, let's say, solution uh, for the industry. Then beside this, I think on top of this one, we also have a um, number of other things we want to share with you. So this is very much the third part of my, my presentation, talk about telecom grade solutions. Uh, for this part, I think I would like to bring up OPNV uh, as, uh, let's say, it's an open source project, uh, you know, among vendors, among the carriers, as one initiative to truly speed up, let's say, um, telecom cloud uh, deployment or NFE deployment as a purpose. Uh, I assume all of you are rather familiar now with OPNV as an uh, open source project. And the purpose, I think, is rather simple, that we want to have a community, a, a platform, so that we can jointly, let's say, work on uh, work out a, a reference uh, platform solution so that we can quickly start a deployment and truly have, let's say, benefit from, from, uh, from virtualization from cloud then. Um, related to this uh, OPNV, very much the saying that we are, uh, Arizona is very active in, uh, in the OPNV project. I myself uh, is very much involved. I'm very much involved in the testing and performance subgroup in the OPNV project. And here I want to bring up some of the projects just to share with you which are very much related to the telecom grade, let's say, solution and how do we address that. So in the OPNV project, uh, you probably have already noticed in the web, uh, you know, in, the, in their um, wiki page, and there we have different type of projects, like from the requirement project side, uh, I sh I'm sharing some of the projects here, like um, China Mobile is driving this high availability project as a team, te uh, leading the team, and then there are different vendors and, and carriers joining that project. So that's very much related to, again, how, to, how do we make sure that this high availability requirements are properly, um, properly addressed in, in, the, in the OPNV project. And then from Arizona side, we actually have one project we proposed some months ago. We call it a transformer project. And this is very much, by the way, it's the introduction of my, my talk when you actually read uh, what we want to talk about. So the Transformer project is very much um, uh, what Arizona, we believe that as uh, the telecom vendor leader, we have the responsibility to basically help the industry to quickly uh, say that once we have the virtualized solution in place, how do we truly make sure that with the virtualized portion of the, let's say, what I just now shared, uh, that portion of the solution, we can still make sure that, because the carriers still have a rather large base today, it's a native deployment of the network. So how can we make sure that the network, the infrastructure in transformation, truly work end to end? So therefore, we believe that, we call this project the transformer, is very much uh, a kind of like, let's say, testing verification um, project, we believe, not uh, we talk about, it's not about a sandbox type of testing, but rather in the live network environment. 
like uh, what we say, open side community, OPNV community, the focus is very much on the virtualized related solution. But then outside the virtualized box, Arizona has been working together with many other vendors, telecom vendors, like we have already well established testing environments for, let's say, the native part of the network, from the radio, let's say, to the, to the core, basically from the, let's say, we can say end to end, truly from the, from the device to application, we do have those testing environments. And we believe that we would like to leverage those existing infrastructure, existing, let's say, testing methodology and test cases. So we don't need to start from scratch. Uh, once we want to deploy, for example, a certain solution in the, in the live network. Uh, so that's one project I'm going to show a little bit more in a minute, yeah. But bes beside that project, the other thing we're also driving, I want to share with, uh, with you here is um, another effort Arizon just recently brought up is a Yak Stick project, which is an effort we have um, uh, basically brought up a common testing framework for pre-deployment NFE infrastructure. So basically for any reference VNF, you can actually use this yardstick test framework and you can make sure that truly that your infrastructure solution would uh, work before you even go out in, into the live network, yeah. So here is some, uh, basically this map showing is all the project in OPNV. And I would like to spend some time uh, more to talk about the transformer project, as I mentioned just now. So the picture here in the background it just uh, is rather busy. It's not uh, have the intention to let you see what exactly it is. But the background here, like you see the cloud in the middle, is very much the virtualized environment. And this is the, the focus here in this open stack community in the OPNV community. And around this cloud is very much what I just now mentioned. This is very much the existing let's say, uh, mobile network infrastructure, the native infrastructure. So this part is very much, let's say, in place, so that we don't really need to recreate this environment. And we believe that the best way to do that is very much to say that we should drive for sure the vertical verification, and that's very much the VNF with NFEI, for example, the, the, the vertical, you know, all the integration ver verification activity in the OpenStack community, in the OPNV community. But then beside that, we believe that we also need to focus a lot on the horizontal verification. That's very much between, let's say, the virtualized and non-virtualized environment. And this is the part which we, we believe that Arizona can contribute a lot because like the things we've already been doing in the past, let's say, yeah, many years. And this is also the part we believe that we need to jointly uh, work with the community to redefine certain process and methodology and tools so truly saying that we can address the full stack performance, not only about like saying we know the native environment very well, but with the virtualized environment coming in, we need to, we can reuse quite a lot of things, but we also have to re redefine the new stuff, yeah. And then I think the focus of course, as I mentioned, is very much about the test cases. There are actually thousand test cases for any combination we have been working for the native combination. And now if you have virtualized, for example, you have any WinF coming, you have any NFEI deployment, then we need to consider how can we truly do address the testing in, in the best way then, in a smart way, yeah. And here is a talk about, then it's very much about consolidation, it's about automating uh, the test case as well, yeah. Uh, then uh, I think one thing I also want to share related to this transformer project is very much about, uh, as I mentioned about the mobile industry, like in terms of multi-vendor interoperability, as we all understand, this has been a challenge for the mobile industry. But then in the past, let's say 20, 30 years, the mobile industry has been driving this multi-vendor interoperability through a forum called the Network Vendor IoT uh, Forum, which is a kind of informal group of uh, 3GPP. So that forum has been very, let's say, uh, essential uh, for the, to help the mobile industry to drive basic interworking across, uh, you know, different vendors. And we believe that for, for our SDN, uh, NFE, and the cloud now, we need to have a similar, let's say, effort uh, for the industry. And therefore, we believe that this OPNV transformer project Arizona is driving fulfill that uh, purpose in a way. So we actually want to call for collaboration among vendors and uh, carriers here and all the partners here so that we want to focus on to truly through that forum, that project, we can address the te telecom grade uh, performance uh, requirement to truly ensure that, uh, ensure the interoperability and also interworking them. 
And I think finally, this is uh, one thing which uh, Arizon announced uh, about half a year ago. You probably recall that. Uh, we call it Arizon OPNV certification program. And the thinking here is very much uh, saying is Arizon investment to support OPNV to succeed uh, as a community. So we believe that we want to drive as a leader, uh, drive the industry certification. This is not a vendor specific certification, but rather we want to drive a partner program and consolidate the exi consolidate, let's say, the vendor-specific certification in a way. And also, like, the thinking is very much to certify vendors towards the standard SCNFE and also the OPNV reference platform. Um, then in terms, as I just now I mentioned, the multi-vendor compliance and also end-to-end full-stack performance, this is very much uh, the, thing, uh, the focus of this program. And in terms of benchmarking performance, this is, again, a very important topic, which is very much today's focus in my speech. Like, once again, I want to highlight when we talk about how do we, how do we benchmark workload performance, it's not about only in the virtualized environment. It's very much a combination of virtualized and non-virtualized environment that we have to consider end to end. Uh, so I think then come to my summary, actually. So I just want to conclude with this, uh, uh, this talk uh, regarding the saying to summarize again, like we all agree, the telecom cloud challenge now, like with uh, all this openness with the flexibility, with this interchangeable like components as a focus. The biggest challenge as we see now for telecom cloud is truly as also I just now shared about the requirement, right? From the regulator point of view, from also like the end user perspective, uh, performance requirement on network, on infrastructure is definitely the, the biggest challenge. And then also, once again, highlight the multi-vendor challenge because when we work with our customer like majority of the carriers today, their biggest concern is about the complexity. You know, they're very excited about uh, the promises with virtualization, right, with cloudification. But their biggest concern is saying, how can I truly put everything together, right? Because suddenly I have probably, before I, I only need to work with two or three vendors, and now I suddenly probably have 20 or 30 vendors. So this is the biggest challenge for the carriers, and this is also the biggest challenge for the industry. So therefore, we believe that, um, uh, as a summary, we believe the end-to-end -end service performance and the user experience, as I just now said, is very much about uh, telecom and IT infrastructure is an interconnected infrastructure today, as we see. And it's also about the infrastructure together with application and with the devices that truly have to work uh, well then to truly satisfy the, the end user need. And then from OpenStack perspective, I think OpenStack for NFE is truly leading the transformation as just now I shared. We believe that we are well on the way to address this telco cloud uh, solution need. And in the end, I think from Arizona perspective, we will continue to contribute and also bridge the telecom and the IT world as we see today to truly to drive this network society as our, uh, our mission. So this concludes my part of the talk, and um, I don't actually know how much time we have, but then um, now it's open for questions, yeah. If you have any, yeah. Yes, please. Please use the mic at the back of the room for the questions. Right, right, okay. Um, not yet, actually. It's, it's a very good question. Thanks for that. I forgot to mention that the, the Facebook Arizon project is very much on the native environment. So it's not yet in the virtualized solution, but it's very soon. Like, you know, any carriers who is going to have a part of the solution, maybe I should show, yeah, that's exactly this picture I want to show. So today, we don't have anything, no OpenStack, no OPNV portion, but we believe very soon, once we have the solution deployed, uh, you know, the solution OpenStack is providing very much will be part of the end-to-end -end chain. So this is a very important message today I want to bring to all of you here, is saying the work you're doing will be very much part of this, very critical part of this end-to-end, -end, let's say, service uh, performance, yeah. Okay, any other questions? You can ask anything. You can ask about <laughs> not related to OpenStack. That's fine too. Yeah. But maybe I should ask you guys uh, a question, Lawrence. Like, do you have any? Let's say, how do you think about um, the, the challenge now? How do you, uh, I understand the telecom cloud is uh, 
you know, a difficult uh, discussion in terms of to the toco grade uh, performance, right? Uh, it's all up to interpretation. Uh, probably a different uh, community, you know, different group might have a different understanding in a way. Maybe someone can share, like, what, how do you think, like, what's the biggest challenge today? No? Yes. No, no. Right. Yes. Fully agree. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the, the 5 9, the carry grade requirement is not about single component, but it's rather, you know, the end to end view, like, and also it depends on the user scenario, the use case, right? Yeah. Okay. Where is the where is the microphone, by the way? Uh, you have. Yeah, I think the comments just now is very much like saying that when we talk about carry grade, it's not about single component in, let's say, in the end-to-end -end chain as we discussed, but rather, like you're saying, what to drive the cost is rather when we put a requirement on, it's often like a silo-based requirement setting, right? And we put a requirement on every single component, for example, like on hardware side, I understand HP definitely you, you, you are getting requirements from the customer regarding you have to provide five nines on every level of your hardware what you're providing, yeah. So question here. Uh, yes. You have talked uh, about uh, quite a bit on the performance and functionality. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion about a, um, the security aspect of the, uh, um, the whole solution right now uh, based on OpenStack? Uh, does that, uh, is there any gap uh, from the uh, carrier requirements? Okay, so your question is um, related to, um, uh, let's say we talk about the performance and it's specifically related to telco, telecom security, right? Yeah. Uh, what yeah. kind of requirements we see today? Yeah, I, uh, mean, I yeah. mean, you talked uh, quite a bit on the performance right. aspects, but yeah. how about security? Uh, yeah, security, as uh, I probably went through too quickly just now, security is definitely part of the, you know, the performance requirement, you know, the telco grade performance requirement as we see. So you're definitely right. We're not to separate security away from uh, any other requirement. So here we're probably just to talk about a simple case, like when we talk about carry grade security, is to talk about the multi tendency with end-to-end -end isolation. This is kind of straightforward requirement. But then in terms of security, there are many other things, many other aspects we need to consider. And I think I also shared a bit that just now we're saying that from um, how we work with our customer, our partner today, we believe that this is the fundamental, the basic stuff we need to start with. Um, I don't know if I answer your question. It's, you probably have other things that you have in mind regarding security specifically. Do you have any um, study or you know, evaluation of how the status, current status of OpenStack meets the uh, carry grade security? And does it need to be hardened? Any plan uh, for open uh, NFE uh, to work on the aspect? Uh, definitely. I think I forgot to mention, by the way, like um, from Arizona perspective, OpenStack activity, you know, all the things you guys are doing are very crucial for us. And Arizona is actually one of the top 10 companies are investing most uh, in OpenStack uh, activity. So, like, uh, related to your question, yes, we are looking into, for example, the ongoing uh, activity related to uh, security uh, issues. And again, the, how do we drive the, let's say, different part of the project and truly address a specific customer need? I think I probably can't comment on saying what exactly the status is, but it definitely is, is the plan then, if we haven't really started with uh, driving certain project yet, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yes. Okay, any other comments or questions, please? Uh, this is Ashik from Entity Docomo. Uh, we also have a project in OPNFP called Doctor, which looks only in the availability of the network nodes rather right. than the whole infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is through your investigation in high availability in a virtualized environment, uh, are you looking into cost? Because one of the reasons why we are trying to migrate to a virtualized environment is because 
we believe that it will reduce cost. We do not want, again, a very expensive infrastructure, which, right. which is highly re reliable. Rather, try to achieve high reliability through software, through yes. the manual architecture. So yeah. how do you see cost in your investigation? Um, you're definitely right. Uh, thanks for the question. So the question is about like when we talk about high availability and the, how do you again consider the cost and pro, you know in terms of a balance balance again the, the requirements on high availability and, and the cost in the sense it's very much similar I guess as the comments just now from from the HP gentleman. Um, like what we see high availability again uh, to to emphasize that we do not really. Uh, encourage like truly you need to have for example five nines or six nines uh, on all level of you let's say of, of the infrastructure but rather in terms of uh, let's say the intelligence because like when we talk uh, uh, high availability is also about the physical let's say connectivity is one thing the logical part is another thing so the intelligence we have now with virtualized like say um, like decoupling, for example, the, the, the decoupling of hardware software, then you actually bring certain, let's say, flexibility. But the challenge now is very much about how do you monitor, for example, like if you're assuming that you could have lower requirement on hardware, but then you need to have certain intelligence that's, so that you should be able to very actively monitor the status of you, for example, certain, uh, let's say, host, for example, like if you truly have that kind of like uh, uh, thinking. So regarding the cost, going back to your comments about the cost, yes, with every solution, you know, we, we do look into this uh, total cost ownership, like the TCO analysis. And uh, so from the product side, I guess, every component, for example, Arizon is also doing hardware now, like, and we're providing this hyperscale data center hardware uh, recently, as we announced in Barcelona. So that uh, piece of hardware, we truly focus a lot about analyzing the, the TCO, the cost. And from that perspective, we also look into the high availability, for example. If you have an uh, efficient, for example, component, uh, in, in that case, like when we have a software-defined hardware, then you actually can benefit a lot in terms of saying that achieving the high availability through much lower cost then. Um, so I think I probably can only give you a general uh, uh, comment on that, like saying, yes, we definitely consider the cost, and there should be a balance between, let's say, very, let's say, 5.9 requirement, carry grade requirement, and, and, and the potential cost with every scenario then we, we supposed to come up with, yeah. Um, and this is, by the way, like you mentioned, OPMD project, like we are actually work, looking to, we need to co collaborate more then uh, through all the existing projects, yeah. Okay, any other questions? I think we still have some, some more time, right? Um, Okay, if uh, you don't really have any further comments or questions, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned just now, like, um, we, are very, we actually would, would like to truly have more community members to uh, join force working with us. And as I said, uh, either through the OPNV uh, project or through the OpenStack activities. Um, so once again, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, your time here. Yeah.